This is part 49 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to enhance and optimize the progress bar that we created in part 48. So please watch part 48 before proceeding. This is the progress bar that we created in the previous video session. There are two problems with this progress bar. Notice when we select 30, it starts counting from 1 and goes till 30. That's great. But when we select 60, we want it to count from 31 till 60. But instead, it's going to start from 1 and then goes all the way till 60. Look at that. So that's one problem. And the other problem is when we want it to count backwards. So we want to go from 60% to 30%. So we expect it to count it backwards from 60 till 30. But instead of that, it's going to again start at 1 and go till 30. So let's see how to solve these two problems. The reason why it always starts at 1 is because if you look at the code that we worked with in the previous video session, notice the counter is always set to 1. That's the reason why it's always starting at 1. Now, if we can somehow remember the previous percentage value that the user has selected, then we can solve the problem. Because instead of starting at 1, we can start at the previous percentage value that the user has selected and then continue counting till the current percentage. Right? So to keep track of previous percentage and current percentage, I'm going to create two variables. So let's name this previous percentage and let's initialize that to 0. Similarly, let's create another variable and let's name this current percentage. And when we click the button, so previous percentage equals whatever we have in the current percentage variable and current percentage equals whatever the user has selected from the drop-down list. So now we are keeping track of both the values, the value that the user has selected last time and the current percentage value. At the moment, if you look at this animate progress bar function, it has got only one percentage value, that is the current percentage. So let's actually change the value, I mean name of the parameter, current percentage. And in addition to current percentage, we also want to pass previous percentage to this function. So now this function has got two parameters. So this one was current percentage, so let's change the name to current percentage. And the counter, instead of starting at 1, let's start at previous percentage and go till current percentage. Right? And here, you know, notice that our function now has two parameters, but when we are calling the function, we only passing value for one parameter. Instead, let's go ahead and pass the values for both the parameters. And the values are present in these variables, so let's use those variables. So previous percentage and current percentage. So let's save the changes, reload this page, and look at this. When we select 30, it's going to start from 1, go till 30. That's great. Now when we select 60, look at what's going to happen. It's going to continue from 31 till 60. And that's what we expect. Now, let's count backwards. Let's go from 60 till 30. Look at this, it's going to count backwards. But instead of going all the way till 30, it's actually stopping at 31. So this means when our previous percentage value is greater than the current percentage. So here, the previous percentage was 60 and the current percentage is 60. So we want to count backwards. So when the previous percentage is greater than current percentage, we want to subtract 1 from the current percentage. And that's going to solve the problem. So within our code here, I'm going to check if previous percentage, if that is greater than current percentage, then what we want to do is current percentage minus equals 1. So basically we're subtracting 1 from the current percentage. So let's save the changes, reload the page, and look at this. Let's go till 50. So it should start from 1, go till 50. Now let's count backwards. So it should not stop at 21. It should go till 20. Now let's count till 10. Look at that. All right, so to achieve this, look at the amount of code that we have written. It's a lot of code. One of our YouTube subscribers by name Aptem A, he has sent me a, you know, the, a version of code which does exactly the same thing. But his version of the code is much smaller, easy to read, and cleaner. 
let's rewrite this program using his version. Thanks to him for his valuable contribution. So with his version, we don't require these two variables here. So let's get rid of that. And since we don't have those two variables, we don't need these two variables as well. So what I'm going to do is copy this and animate progress bar to this function. We are only going to pass the value that the user has selected from the drop-down list. So these two lines are going to go. And this animate progress bar function doesn't require two parameters. It only requires the current percentage that the user has selected. So that's going to stay there. Now if you look at this animate function, look at this. We're using, you know, there are two variations of this animate function. So if you look at the jQuery documentation, so this is the first variation where we specify the properties that we want to animate using a JSON object. So here we want to animate the width. So we're using a JSON object and specifying the property name and a value for that one. And then we are using you know, the next parameter, which is the duration, and passing 2,000 milliseconds. So here we are using you know, this variation at the moment within our example. Now we have another variation. So this variation of the animate method, notice that you know, here we specify the properties and the additional options that we want to pass to the animate method, both using a JSON object. So I'm going to use this variation. In a bit, you'll understand why. So here, instead of passing duration like that, I'm going to use a JSON object. And when we use JSON object to specify the options, now we want to specify duration. So the name of the option is duration. OK, so duration, we want that to be 2,000 milliseconds. And in addition to that, I also want to specify the step option, right? And notice, what does this option represent? This option represents a function. And the function that is associated with the step option is called at every step in the animation. right? And notice, this function has got two parameters, now and tween. In a bit, we'll discuss what those two parameters are. First, let me implement the code, and then we'll quickly walk over that. So I'm going to use the step option. And this represents a function. So this is going to be an anonymous function. And you know this is going to do pretty much similar to what this function is doing. So I'm going to copy this code. And from the jQuery documentation, remember this the function that is associated with the step option has two parameters, now and tween. So I'm going to pass those two parameters here. In a bit, we'll discuss what these parameters mean. OK, and instead of using counter, we don't have counter anymore here. I'm going to use this now parameter. So I'm going to use now, divide that by 500, and multiply whatever result we get by 100. OK? And that means we can get rid of all of this code. OK? So let's format this a bit. Look at the amount of code now. It's a lot less than what we have uh, previously. OK, so let's save the changes. Let us look at this in action. Let's see if this is going to work the same way. Look at that. First, let's select 30. So it should start from 1, go till 30. And now when we select 60, it should continue from 31 till 60. Look at that. It works. And now let's count backwards. So we want this to go from 60 till 30. Look at that. It's counting backwards. And it goes all the way till 30. Now let's select 10. It should go from 30 till 10. OK, so it's working. But the amount of code that we have to write is a lot less. Now let's look at what's going on here. So this is pretty straightforward. So we are animating the width of the inner div element, right? Now let's take an example. Let's say when we select current percentage from the drop-down list as 10, right? When we select 10, what gets passed to this function is 10, right? Now here we want to animate the width of the inner div element. Now the width you know, of the outer div that we have is 500. So inside that, in outer div, we have another div, which is inner div. So the width of that one initially, what is the width? The width of the inner div is 0. So we want to set the width of the inner div element to 10% of 500 pixels, which is the width of the outer div, 
right? So 10% of 500 pixels, what is that? 10% of 500 is 50 pixels. So we want to increase the width from 0 till 50 pixels. So that's what this is going to do. We are passing the percentage and we are computing the width of the uh, inner development, the final width. Okay, So now the width is going to be increased from 0 till 50. So at every step of the animation while it's increasing it, you know, the function that is associated with the step option is called and this now parameter is going to contain that value which we are animating. So actually, let's log the value of that now parameter to the console and we can see what we get. So console.log and let's write the value to the console vendor. All right, so let's reload this page. Let's launch developer tools. So we are on the console window and let's click start animation. So look at that. We get the value of the width. Look at that. The width starts at 0, 0 0.12, 0 0.19. It goes all the way till 50, right? Because we selected 10%. 10% of 500 is 50. So it starts at 0 and go till 50. And we get, you know, at every step of the animation, you know, whatever width it is increasing, that is passed to this function. And look at what we are doing here. As we are increasing the width, we are passing the now value. So now contains the width, you know, whatever you see here, that is what is passed, you know, to this function. So when 0 0.12 is passed, what we are doing here, we are dividing that by 500 and multiplying it by 100. Now to understand this properly, let's take the example of 10. When the value is 10, when the percentage value is 10, you know, the, um, you know, this now value will be 50. Now to get the percentage, you know, what is 50 pixels of 500? What percentage is 50 pixels of 500? How do we compute that? You know, divide that 50 by the total, which is 500. So now, which contains 50, we are dividing that by 500 and then multiply that by 100. That is going to give us the percentage. So that's a simple percentage calculation, right? So, and we are taking ceiling here. So when we take ceiling, what's going to happen? Let's take, for example, you know, current percentage when it is 0, 0 divided by 500 is 0 and that multiplied by 100 is 0 and ceiling of 0 is 0. Now when we pass, let's say 1 for example, 1 divided by 500 into 100. So what do we get there? 1 fifth, right? Ceiling of 1 fifth is 1. But then if you look at the values that are being you know, logged here, it's not incrementing it as 0, 1, 2. Instead, it's doing a very small increment, 0 0.12 width, 0 0.19, and then it goes to 0.27, and then it does it all the way till 50 pixels, right? Now, if we select, for example, 20, it should do it till 100. Look at that. So, and here we have the formula. Ceiling give, will give us the uh, nearest, you know, higher value, the integer, okay? So pretty straightforward. So now, parameter, so if you look at the function that is associated with the step option, that function gets called, you know, at each step in the animation, and that method has two parameters, now and tween, now contains the value being animated. In our example, we are animating the width of the inner development, so it contains the width value. And tween is a complex object and has got several properties. And in this table right here, we have a few properties listed. It has got element property, and that represents the DOM element that is being animated. In our case, inner development is being animated. And it has also now and end parameter uh, properties. Now parameter represents the value the animation is currently at. And property represents the value the animation will end at. And in addition to these three, there are several more. And if you want to look at all these uh, properties of this complex object, you know, you can set a breakpoint and inspect that object. In fact, you know, let's actually browse the web page using Internet Explorer and we can actually set a breakpoint and see the values. 
So let's set that as default. And let's throw in a breakpoint here. And let's run this in debug mode. So now it's going to stop at that breakpoint. So let's leave that at 10 and click uh, Start Animation. And look at this. When we hover over Tween, look at that. It has got several properties. You can see Element Property. And if I expand that, and if I go to the ID property, we can actually see the ID. Look at that. It's inner div. That's the element that is being animated. Similarly, we have now and end. Now represents, you know, it actually starts at zero and it ends at, um, you know, 50. When the width of the inner div is 50, that's when the animation starts. In addition to that, we have several other parameters, I mean, properties. Thank you for listening and have a great day.